If you do anything with audio on Linux, chances are you use Audacity. Now, there are other audio editors and audio recorders out there for Linux, and many of them are really good. There are even a couple of really professional ones. But Audacity is probably by far the most popular. A couple of months ago, Audacity was purchased by a company called Muse Group, and since then they've proceeded to piss off every single user that they have. And as far as I can tell, they've actually done nothing in terms of actually improving the product. All they've done so far is try to institute telemetry and use Google to do it, uh, and that pissed everybody off. And then they forced every developer that contributes from the community to sign a agreement that allowed them full control over that code. And that pissed a lot of people off, mainly because of the first fiasco, nobody trusts Muse Group. Uh, those agreements really aren't all that unusual, but because this company doesn't have very much trust, people were rightfully worried that Muse Group would take Audacity's code and maybe make it proprietary or something, because like I said, nobody trusts this company. A few months later now, after those fiascos, they're doing it again. They've changed their privacy policy, and it's not what you would say uh, FOSS friendly. It's not good at all. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I just want to say this. Audacity is going to get forked. I'm just, I mean, it was probably going to anyways, but somebody out there is planning on forking Audacity, and that's returning to be a, com a community project. That's probably what's going to happen, but... Let's go ahead and jump into this. So first of all, just as proof that I use Audacity, I'm using Audacity right now. I use Audacity to edit all of the podcasts, all the videos. Um, my other podcasts, the three casts, I use Audacity for. So Audacity is a really important program to me. I use it every single day. And the fact that I can no longer trust the developers behind it is a little worrying. So let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. So... The first we really knew about this was a post on their GitHub two days ago from a user called Sh Sh this. I can't pronounce that. Basically what they did is they linked to this privacy policy here and pointed out a few things that aren't so great about it. So I'm not going to actually go through and read all of this thing. But there's a few things that are worrying. So first of all, there's this. this The app we provide, which they're talking about Audacity, is not intended for individuals below the age of 13. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the GPL v2 doesn't actually allow the developers to limit the people who use their software. It's right in the license. You can't deny anyone from using it. That's part of what GPL is. Uh, now, there are some comments in this post here that we'll go back to that basically say that this was probably done because of the GDPR in the EU. Uh, in, in that legislation, children under 13 can't consent to a privacy policy at all. So that's probably the reason why they put this in here. The next big portion that w is bad is this one here, number four. Who does Audacity share your personal data with? So first of all, the answer to this question should be no one, right? I mean, this is an offline audio editor. There should They should not be collecting any data whatsoever. None. Audacity should never call back to Muse Group servers without the knowledge of the, the user. They should be collecting no data. We may disclose the personal data listed above your hashed IP address. Uh, to the following categories of recipients, the staff members, any competent law enforcement enforcement body, regulatory government agency, court, or third party. I mean, <laughs> who came up with this and thought that this was a good idea? And uh, moreover, who came up with this and thought, well, you know what? The FOSS community is going to be perfectly fine with us sending any data we might have to the law enforcement should they request it. I mean, that's perfectly fine. It's going to be, that's fine. These people are idiots. I mean... <laughs> The next one, our auditors, advisors, legal representatives, and similar agents. So basically this means anybody. <laughs> I mean, anybody could be an, an advisor. I mean, that's just crazy. So it, it reads in full, to our auditors, advisors, legal representatives, and similar agents in connection with the advisory services they provide for us for legitimate business purposes. So basically any reason that they can consider a legitimate business purpose, which would be, again, anything, under contractual prohibition of using the personal data for any other purpose. So we'll give, basically what they're saying is, we'll give them your data, 
as long as they promise really nicely not to do anything other with it other than what we allow them to do, which again, they don't say what they'll allow them to do, whatever, uh, to a potential buyer. So if Muse Group were to get purchased, the people who bought it would automatically get your data as well. And to any other per person, if you have provided your prior consent or disclosure, which we didn't provide a prior, I mean, you provide your prior dis consent and disclosure just by agreeing to this privacy policy. That's how they would argue it. This is the most atrocious thing I've ever seen in a FOSS software agreement. It's, this is a piece of FOSS software that is maybe the most used piece of FOSS software outside of OBS and Blender. Well, outside of Linux itself, probably. I mean, between those four things, Linux, OBS, Blender, Audacity has to be in the top four of most used pieces of soft, FOSS software. And now that this has been purchased by this evil corporation, I'm just going to go out there and say it. It's an evil corporation. <laughs> They're doing this shit. I mean, what the hell is going on with Audacity? So, so there are a few other things in here that are actually really worrying. So the first one is their data storage and retention policy. They say that their, the IP address will only be stored in a, an identifiable way for one calendar day. Okay, that's not horrible, but they shouldn't be storing it at all. Uh, the next one here is, we may also store your personal data for the pursuit of exercising, establishing, and defending our legal rights in accordance with applicable laws. Now, <laughs> that is an interesting way of putting it. So that basically means anything that they deem necessary to save for protecting their their rights they can keep now the next one is very interesting all of your personal data is stored in, on, on our servers in the EEA however we are occasionally required to share your personal data with our main office in Russia and our external counsel in the USA so um, I don't know I mean we don't I want to come across as you know, anti-Russian. I mean, because I know I probably have people from Russia who watch the channel. Plenty of good people in Russia. Government, not necessarily the most trustworthy in the world. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't think it's shocking news to anybody. So they have to share your identifiable information, your personal information with their main office in Russia from time to time. Whenever, In other words, whenever they want to. Supposedly, and this is the second part of this, we have put in appropriate safeguards which includes the European Commission's standards contractual clauses to ensure that whenever your personal data is transferred outside the EEA to countries that are not deemed adequate by the European Commission, your personal data receives an adequate level of protection in accordance with the GDPR. The thing is, you say that, I don't trust you. And I don't trust my data in Russia. I'm, I mean, I just don't. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. Even if it's just my IP address... I don't trust my data in Russia. That's a big thing. It's just, it's this whole policy. Every single thing that you have on here is not good, right? This whole thing is not a good privacy policy. And the fact that they have a privacy policy to begin with is, is, is dumb. Because again, this is an offline audio editor. They should have none of your information. None. There should be no reason for them to have your IP address or any other personally identifiable information, your OS or whatever. Now, at least they shouldn't have those things without your consent. And as far as I'm concerned, they don't have anybody's consent. Whenever I open up Audacity, I don't actually get... I mean, they have that splash screen for the first time you open up Audacity, but they've had that for years. It makes you wonder if that, that has changed, because I haven't actually opened up a fresh install of Audacity in a while. So it's possible that they've added something, you know, like a po privacy policy on top of that. Um, I'm not actually sure what was on there before. I don't think I've ever actually read it now that I think about it. But still, I mean, they shouldn't have your 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 personal data. They shouldn't have it. This company can obviously cannot be trusted. Just to go back to where I was before. I mean, there's more going on here, but it's more interesting to go through these some of these comments. So this part here is actually just talking about this language here about how it doesn't comply with the GPLv2 or the GPLv3. So that I mean they're in violations of the license that their software is licensed under. So that's I mean 
whatever. Uh, this person says basically what I say, that there's a fork is going to happen. I mean, somebody's going to fork this and take it over and get a lot of donations to do so. It's almost a guarantee. And I'm actually kind of shocked that it hasn't happened yet. I thought for sure that this that would happen uh, after the first, you know, fiasco with the whole telemetry thing. But it hasn't, as far as I know. Now, F Audacity has been forked many, many times. I mean, if we go up, if we go up here to the top, it, it's been forked over a thousand times, almost 1,500 times, uh, including me. I've forked it as well. I mean, it's on my GitHub page because, you know, a after that first one, I was like, well, what, what happens if they decide to take proprietary? Uh, I kind of want this. So a lot of people have forked it. As far as I know, there are no official projects in terms of actually taking it and developing it further, but it's only a matter of time, I think. So what the hell is going on with Audacity? I mean, like I said, I think it's going to be forked, but it feels like Muse Group only purchased Audacity in order to troll the FOSS community or something. I don't know. It, I mean, granted, they've only had it for a couple months, so expecting them to do a whole UI refresh, which it desperately needs, uh, in a couple months is, you know, obviously not going to be realistic. But the only changes they've made in those the those two months have been negative ones. Now, Audacity 3.0 did come out, but I'm not sure if it was before or after the purchase. Um, but even then, that change had been in progress for many months beforehand. So they had nothing to do with the new file format or anything like that. And even then, that's not a huge change. So um, what the hell are they doing with Audacity? It's their, They seem to just be trying to find a way to make it profitable yes i don't know none of the changes that they've made so far have been community facing things that have been in the best interests of the community of the people who use audacity they've only been in the best interests of muse group and that's not i mean it shouldn't be surprising considering their corporation and their interest in, is in making money but it still feels like they've misjudged the community because, like I said, this is going to get forked. People are going to move away from what this, and I mean, sure, some people will still use it, and maybe somewhere down the line, Muse Group actually does some good things to actually advance and modernize Audacity, and people start using it again. But it doesn't feel that that's the way that this is headed. This feels like Audacity is going to become a dead project because. Very few people will actually use it. So, or at least people who pay attention will actually use it. So, that is it for, for me. Uh, there's a lot more to this. Uh, and I will leave the links to this GitHub page or the GitHub thread in the comments below. As well as the privacy policy itself. So you can take a look for yourself and you definitely should. And I will also link a couple of videos that will explain the first two fiascos. So that you can get a more in-depth feeling of what has happened so far so uh, let me know in the comments below if you're going to continue to use audacity and whether or not you think that you'll move to a fork when it inevitably happens so uh, you can follow me on twitter at the linuxcast you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast and you can also support me by hitting the join button down below if you want to support me here on youtube with money so before i go i should take a moment to thank my current patrons Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Mitchell, Chris, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.